Turn in your Bibles with me to Ephesians chapter 6. We'll be looking at the last few verses in this book. This will be the end of our study, I think, for this book. You can follow along with me in your Bibles or look up on the screen as we read Ephesians chapter 6, verses 21 through 24. So that you also may know how I am and how I am doing, Tychicus, the beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will tell you everything. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are and that he may encourage your hearts. Peace be to the brothers and love with faith From God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with love incorruptible. Father, we do ask that once again you teach us the things that we need to learn. Open up our eyes, our ears, but especially our hearts as we learn these things. Fill this room with your spirit. Quiet the hearts, Lord, that we may hear from heaven today. And I ask these things in your name. Amen. Please take your seats. Two things to help you make it through the spiritual battles. Boy, have we come through a bunch of stuff here talking about spiritual warfare. But you know what? These are important lessons as I refer to Paul as the ambassador in chains. But where has Ephesians taken us through this last year that we have studied? Well, from chapter 1, blessed be the the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ. And He chose us in Him. And in Him we have redemption through His blood. In Him we have obtained an inheritance. In Him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, were sealed with the promise Holy Spirit. And you remember this? That you were once dead. You were once dead in your trespasses and sins. And the mystery. The mystery is that you are no longer strangers and aliens, but fellow citizens with the saints and the members of the household of God. And for this reason, Paul prayed for them that they would come to know the love of Christ that He may dwell in their hearts, and that they would be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, and the height, and the depth, and to know what that love is that surpasses all knowledge, and that they would be filled with the fullness of God. Therefore, walk in the manner worthy of your calling to which you have been called with all humility, with patience, gentleness, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit. And i got to tell you, you got to no longer walk as the uh, Gentiles do in the futility of their mind darkened in their understanding, alienated, and they're ignorant, and their hearts are hardened. And you know what? They practice every kind of impurity. This is not how you learned Christ. Therefore, put away falsehood. 
speak the truth in love. Be angry, but don't sin. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up. And don't grieve the Holy Spirit, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Walk that way. And when you're walking that way, can I tell you? I've got to tell you this. Be imitators of God. Chapter 5. Walk in love as Christ loved us. Let there be no filthy talking, crude joking, but instead let there be thanksgiving. Let no one deceive you with empty words. Okay? Wives, submit to your own husbands. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Children, better listen to your parents. You better obey them. Fathers, please, don't exasperate your kids, but build them up. Don't provoke them to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Slaves, obey your earthly masters. Masters, treat them well. Finally, be strong in the Lord and put on the whole armor. Why? Because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness. Therefore, take up the whole armor. Remember what we did? Strap on that belt of truth. As shoes... For your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace, take up that shield of faith so you can extinguish all the flaming darts. Put on the helmet of salvation. Use the sword of the Spirit. And then fight that battle on your knees, praying at all times for all the saints, And then he says, and also for me. Pray for me. Here I am. I am, remember, these are lessons from the ambassador in chains. Pray for me that I would be bold. No matter what my condition is here, I need to be bold. That I can proclaim the gospel to whoever comes in to my path, even the guards. Hey, guards, let me tell you something. Only Jesus saves. Verse 21, So that, oh, so that you really know what's going on with me? So that you may also know how I am and how I'm doing, I'm sending somebody to let you know. He started in, 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 in the very first chapter. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we're going to learn, that's exactly how he ends. In order for the believers in Ephesus to really know how to specifically pray for him, you know what? They needed more information. Tychicus goes there to let them know just what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, the spiritual battles are still going on. They're still going on with Paul here. But there are two things. With, where are these two things in these last few verses that can help you make it through the spiritual battles? Remember, these are lessons from this ambassador, this representative who is in chains. 
Number one, a trusted, dependable friend in Christ. As I just read, verse 21. So that you may also know how I am and how I'm doing. Tychicus, the beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will tell you everything. I have sent him to you for this very purpose. That you may know how we are and that he may encourage your hearts. Isn't it nice to have a trusted, dependable friend? Oh, how, what a wonderful blessing to our lives. He was specifically chosen by Paul. He had accompanied Paul before. In Acts 20, taking up the relief offering in Jerusalem, not only did he deliver this letter, but he delivered the one to Colossae. He was dependable. He, could, he was an apostolic representative. When he spoke, it was, it was in fact, he was speaking on Paul's behalf. That carries a lot of weight with it. You've seen on these new shows now that the president or some, or some government higher up representative will send somebody to speak in their place. Speak on their behalf. This is the same thing. He's called Beloved. Faithful, a helper for Paul. Let me tell you, this is so important to have somebody in our lives that we can trust, that we can depend on. And if, you've ever, and if you have somebody in, in your life like that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. When you ask them to do something, they'll do it. When you tell them something, They'll keep their mouth shut. That's a trusted friend. They'll share only the information that you want them to share. Very, very important for each and every one of us. So, two things to help you make it through the spiritual battles. This is exactly why he sent him here. Why? Because there are benefits of choosing solid Christian friends. Needless to say, he was a friend of Paul. He was a trusted brother in Christ. The Lord will brings people in your life to help you to grow. To help you to grow closer to Him. To be more like Him. It is important for parents and grandparents to be aware of whom their children and grandchildren are friends with. Those of you who are grandparents here, you do not escape this. Many grandparents think that once, once their kids are married and out of the home and they have their own kids, that this part of your ministry is over. Uh-uh. Sorry. It's very important. That's why the Lord has in, in, has, has given me wonderful mentors that every time, every birthday when I take my children out, when they pick where to go and I ask them this series of questions, one of the questions is, who's your best friend? I want to know where, where their heart is or who their heart is with. Very important. There are benefits of choosing solid Christian friends. And God may remove somebody from your life if they're harmful to your spiritual growth. But, at the same token, God may bring somebody into your life to be a friend with. It's a two-way street. Just turn in your uh, put your finger where you're at. Turn in your Bibles to 1 Samuel 18. How important is it? Think about it. How how important is it to have a wonderful, trusted, dependable friend? 1 Samuel chapter 18. Starting in, in verse 1.
You there? Here we go. As soon as he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And Saul took him that day and would not let him return to his father's house. Then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as his own soul. You ever had a a soulmate? Yeah, I've got, I've got a my my gorgeous wife is my soulmate. She's my she is my human in human terms. She is my most trusted friend in human terms. Okay, never want her to take the place of Jesus, being my ultimate friend. But here, between Jonathan and David, their souls were knit together. They had a love and, and, and if you know that text, so important to have that. But there are benefits and we must choose them carefully. If I was to read, let me see, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26. You can turn there. If not, just listen to me as I read this. One who is righteous is a guide to his neighbor, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. How important is it to have good friends? What could happen if you're hanging out with the wrong people and they're wicked? They could lead you down a path of error, of sin, of wickedness. Ladies and gentlemen, there are benefits of choosing solid Christian friends. Letter A there, they can be a source of comfort. They can be a source of comfort. Proverbs 17, 17, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. A true friend at times can be more faithful when trouble and adversity comes. They can sometimes stick closer than a family member. Why? Why is that? Think about that. Why is that? That's 1824, the last half. Why is that? Why do you think friends many times stick closer than actual family, relatives? Well, one of the things that I thought of is... Family members sometimes will say, well, you know what? I'm tired of helping them. I've done all I can. But then when I hear that, I just think of my Lord. Think of my Lord and think of my Savior. I can never ever imagine or, 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 or Him saying or even in His Word saying, you know what? I'm tired of helping Jim. There's nothing much more that I can do for him. God has taught me how to love and be friends with different people. I stand here today to tell you I have a couple good friends that are homosexuals. They're friends of mine. I love them. I love them dearly. We have wonderful spiritual conversations Do I waver from the truth of God? Absolutely not. But I love them. Where not many people would sit and have a conversation with them or just go out to have something to eat with them. I will. Do we fellowship closely? No. And that's where we that's where we have to be careful. But they're friends of mine. They're casual friends. God, God has taught me how to love them. How to never say, there's nothing that I can do for them. Sure there is. I, I can love them the way Jesus would and always stand firm on the Word of God. Because I can't imagine my Lord ever saying to them, I don't love you. There's nothing much more that, that, than I can do for you. Nah, can't buy that. They can be a source of comfort. 
Choosing solid Christian friends. They can be a source of good counsel. A godly friend's counsel can be sweet when they are honest. Oil and perfume make the heart glad. And the sweetness of a friend comes from his earnest counsel. You gotta love them. Whoever your friends are and whoever you are friends with, you gotta love them enough to speak the truth in love. I, I love you. And when I sit down with my friends who look at the Bible a different, you know, in a different way, I love you, but I'm gonna speak the truth in love. But I love you. They can, be, they can be a source of good counsel. I just, some, you know what? We live in a world today that seems that it has lost its love for people who are different than us. You know, you know where we're comfortable at? Yeah, come on, it's just us. You know, you know where we're most comfortable? Right here. Ain't it cool? We're all friends. You know, we all love each other. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. Ain't it cool? This is where we're comfortable. And that's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. I like being comfortable. I like looking out there and seeing Bobby. And Bobby always nodding his head when I say something. If I say, don't nod if, if I say something wrong. But, but, but it's cool. I look around. I see, I see familiar faces. And that's cool. We're comfortable with that. How many of you would be comfortable sitting down with somebody different from you? Not many. And I've had to look, and have I arrived yet? Uh uh. Nope. I haven't. But I'm learning. Benefits of choosing solid Christian friends they can be a source of comfort, they can be a good source of counsel. They can help you stay sharp. Oh, I love that. Why? Because iron sharpens iron. And one man sharpens another. Like two pieces of metal, they can shape and sharpen each other when they are rubbed together. Two friends can do the same thing to each other with discussions, criticisms, suggestions, ideas. They hone one another. Oh, and I love that. When I was an associate pastor, how many times we used to sit together and, and just say, I don't know, what do you think? I don't know, what do you think? Well, give me your thoughts. Well, this is what I think. Oh, you know what? I didn't think of that. Man, that's what good friends do. You know what? What do you think? Yeah. They help you to stay sharp, even if it's criticism. They can give you pep talks when you need it. They keep you from temptation when you start to stray. Don't go there. I'm t- yeah, but n- nope, don't go there. But you know what? I'm just about ready to give up. No, no, you ain't giving up. Yeah, but I, you know what? I'm just sick and tired of my home life. I don't care. Do I care? Yeah, I care. But what does the Word of God say? What are we supposed to be doing here? They can help you stay sharp. I'm blessed. You know what? It's, it's, it's cool to have friends like that. They can help reveal the true friend of your heart. Think about that. Turn, turn to John chapter 15. Verses 12 through 15. Read, read along with me, please. John 15. I'm starting at verse 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lays down his life for his friends. Jesus says, you are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, 
For the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. They can help you. They can help reveal the truth friend of your heart. Jesus here gives the standard of each and every believer to follow. They are to love each other as He loves them. A devotion that puts aside self in order to meet the needs of others. What is the greatest evidence of this love? To die. For their friend. As he is getting ready to die for them. Listen listen to this story. Sergeant Michael Lockett. Attempting. During the night of September 8, 2007. To recover the body of Private John Botha who was on his first overseas tour in Iraq, was shot. Their determination was not to leave him behind following a ferocious gunfight with the Taliban. Sergeant Lockett, who was a corporal at that time, was killed after... An explosive device was detonated as he dismounted from his vehicle. He was regarded as an inspirational leader. As to all of his friends, he will always be remembered for his laugh, his prominence as a man, his leadership style, his compassion... as he went back for the wounded soldier, he wasn't going to let that wounded soldier die. So he risked his own life when the Taliban was just firing at him and got killed himself. The greatest evidence of this love is to die. You cannot be friends, as what Jesus taught here, in in an intimate, saving, loving relationship with Christ if you spend your life in disobedience to His Word. Friends share things. You got friends you share stuff with? Being a friend of Jesus has great privileges. One of them is the ability to understand the truth of the gospel. Having a true friend, they can help reveal the true friend of your heart and how much you love them, how much you sacrifice for them. Number two, what's the other thing to help you make it through the spiritual battles? A godly concern for other believers. And, and this is so cool. I don't know whether you see this the way that I do, but here's Paul, verses 23 and 24. Peace be to the brothers in love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with love incorruptible. A godly concern for other believers. Paul sought to comfort them. He's in chains. You know, he's in prison. He is awaiting trial, and he's more concerned about these Ephesian believers. That he sought to comfort them. He he sent his friend Tychicus to comfort them, to encourage them. And he references love three times. Look at this. Love with faith. When we live by faith, the love we have and share with others is something that comes from our hearts. This is when I always try and tell you 
to find a need and meet it, to always look for somebody or to say, what can I do for you? Love with faith. What can I do for you? Love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Having a tender affection for the Lord. And love incorruptible. Not corrupted by any wrong motives. That's what he's saying here. Peace be to the brothers and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with love incorruptible. But boy, you know what? There, there, there's something here. What truly exposes Paul's heart here? Think about it. He does have a godly concern for these people. He wants them to know exactly what's going on. He wouldn't have written this letter if everything was hunky-dory there. But there's something that I want you to see here. Put yourself in his place. You're, okay? You're in prison now with chains. Stinky. No newspapers. No internet. What would be your greatest desire? Probably not eating much either. What? Come on now. Come on now. Don't, don't kid me here. What would be your greatest desire? You think you'd want to get out? Huh? Yeah? Sure, all of us would. I'm not saying that's a bad desire to have. It's not. I'd want to get out too. I probably miss the sports center numerous times by now. But I want you to see what Paul's focus and the desire of his heart was here. Hey guys, pray for me that uh, I get out of here. Guys, can uh, can you remember... um, uh, if uh, pray for me that the guards would kind of let me out to the courtyard to walk around. No. The, if he had a desire to get out, that wouldn't necessarily be a bad one. But the desire on his heart was to live out the will of God for his life right there and minister to those believers he was writing to. His focus was on them and not him. Man, every time I look at that, man, I'd be ready to get out. His desire was not for himself, but for them. That was the true desire of his heart. So, two th- really, two things that Paul was using here in this spiritual battle, even to writing them, was he had a trusted, dependable friend that he could depend on. And he still, even in prison, had a godly concern for the people he was writing to, for the others, and not himself. That was the desire of his heart. Oh, that is so good. Do you see it? It's right there. But let me ask you this one question. Think about it through your life. Some some of you have lived longer than me. In human terms, think about your best friend. Think about your best friend. Maybe you've known him for 20 years, 30 years, maybe 10 years, 5 years, whatever. Maybe 50 years. Your best friend. They bring a smile to your face, huh? Somebody you can trust, maybe dependable. Is Jesus your best friend? Can you turn to Him whenever you want? Can you trust Him completely? You can. Can you depend on Him? You can. Because you know why? Human friends will fail you. 
but he never will. Two things to complete our study about spiritual warfare and the spiritual battle. A trusted, dependable friend and still in the middle of the battle, a godly concern for others. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I can't imagine... I can't imagine myself sitting there in that dirt, in that stinky, smelly prison cell, writing writing any letter and not asking for help to get out. But through your Holy Spirit, working in Paul's life and in his heart, he showed a genuine love for these believers. And Lord, how you blessed him with a wonderful friend that he could depend on. Lord, help each and every one of us think about our friendship with you. Because your, your word teaches that if we are true friends with you, Lord, we will obey you. Lord, speak to each and every heart here. Please, during this important time, And may you receive the glory. Amen.